It is not very nice today. I have a pond pump thing control box to repair and I'm going to be talking about why the Mega EV adapter is so important a bit later on but let's get this cracked out. Okay so we have this little control box here and I'll show you in a minute what's happened here and the backstory is this. Okay so I've lost the footage but long story short it's <coughs> and if I'm talking a bit funny it's because I've snapped my front tooth in half and I've got the dentist later and I don't know if he's going to pull it out or not which I'm not overly happy about, but there you go. That's life. So I'll show you what's going on in here. We have three switches. One is like the feed and the other two, one is for the pump and the other one is the filter. And we've got a new box here and I need to try and beat the rain. So we have three fuses inside this one. And what I'll show you in a minute is what you can see there is this PCB module is completely blown. You can see all the black around it there. So that's gone. We'll take these cables out and get it swapped over. Oh, I don't know what sealant they've used, but it's sloppy. Sloppy sealant, lush. I was hoping to reuse those screws. Back in a sec. This tooth is hanging on by a thread. So here's the new box anyway. And the supply grommet is on the other side for this. So that's brilliant compared to this. Well, I might be able to take it out the bottom one and just, they've got these little blanks. So I can stick that in the side one maybe. So I'll just whip that on quick. Oh God, it's one of those days. And then the supply, the cable's a bit big. Don't know how they got that on there. Why, why, why? That is never going in one of those properly. Rather than bodge it like the last guy, trying to stick this great big cable in a 16 mil gland, I'm gonna put a new 20 mil stuffer in there. This is one of those things where you're a little bit under pressure and I could have just tried to jam it in there like the other guy. It's not worth it. It'll only make life difficult later. And that takes two seconds to do. Fix it back onto the rotten post and then poke the supply through. I'm gonna strip it back first. If you haven't got one of these, get one of these. They're perfect for stripping flex cable. All you do is put it in there, wrap it round and pull away because it's got this lovely little blade in there. Way easier than trying to do it with a pair of cutters. This cable is for the filter. And then this cable is for the pump. And then on the back of this module, we have several sets of terminals. The first one there is the supply in, and then these are the switches. So the cable that comes from the house goes in those, that terminal block, pump, water filter, we're going either of these. And I might be even super posh and fair all these up. Let's do that. Get yourself one of these multi, um, containers full of ferrules. The containers are crap, as you can see, they're all mixed up. But if you're ever working with stranded cable, flexi stranded cable like this, it's always worth ferruling it so you can get a better connection and you don't get those strands just coming out of the terminals. Make the effort, do it properly, and a decent set of crimpers. So I'm just gonna strip these back again and start again. Ferrule wise, when you're stripping the cables back, strip more <clears throat> than what you need. Then when you put your ferrule on, Black's a bit baggy, white's a bit tight. Let's try a red. Reds it is. So what you'll have there is the copper coming out. Crimp it up like so. And then you can just trim back the copper and also the ferrule so it's not too long. This cable's a bit short really, but customer will have to move the pump. This cable's a little bit thicker, I think. Let's see if we can get the reds on it. Yeah, red is still good. I'm doing more and more sort of normal electrical work, which I'm going to be sharing with you. And that's just because uh, Octopus have just killed it basically. And it's extremely unfair. And I know like some local businesses really wanted to get involved in the EV industry. They've just been wiped out and gone bust, which is tragic. But I have a feeling that of all the bad jobs that I've seen, it's going to go around into a big circle and we're going to have to go around, back around, 
and clean up. So it should look like this once you've done that. All ferrelled up, if you can see that. And now this should be easier to connect up in theory. Oh, I can feel this tooth wobbling, it's gonna come off. Oh yes. With the ferrules, it just fits lovely. You're gonna get a really nice connection on that. And I'm just gonna trim these down a little bit actually, to be honest. Ever so slightly. That's nicer, nice. If you're thinking about becoming an electrician and you love fiddly things, you are gonna love this job. However, if you don't like fiddly things, don't bother. You need to be very patient sometimes. It's looking lovely. And then get this supply cable in, which is around the other side, which is brilliant. I don't know if my ferrules are gonna go in there. Yeah, they're in, but we're gonna cut them down. That's the joy with these ferrules is that you can trim them so you don't have any of the conductor exposed. After this, I'm off to a warranty hypervolt job where we're going to talk about that EV adapter. It's not one of my installs and it's been done wrong by a guy who my customer said hasn't really done many EVs. And frankly, it shows without being rude, but I want to share with you what he's done and what to watch out for. And like I say, why that EV adapter is super important. Right, that's all connected up. Get a splodge of this in there, push it back on. Rain's coming in. Oh, nip up the other stuffers. And we'll turn it on and see if it blows up. We have a red light on. Red light's on, that's a good sign. So, let's give her a go. Oh, that's working. Seems to be working. Job done. So the EV warranty job I'm off to, whoever installed it, they installed it on an MK split load board and they shuffled it all over one way and they put in a 40 amp MCB. Now, if you don't know, the Hypervolt do not have a built-in type A RCD. And it also clearly states in the instructions that an upstream RCD must be installed. So I've had to order one of these MK miniature RCBOs. Nowhere stocks these, so you're gonna have to order one of these for next day or whatever you need to do. As a pre-warning, if you're working on an MK board, and this is a classic example of someone who's clearly undercut the likes of me and you, because they don't know what they're doing and all they've priced for, rather than replacing the board or putting an additional board in with the tails, the Henley block, and all the other bits and bobs, They've just chucked an MCB in and off they go, which is why that EV adapter is so important because without it, you can't test the RCD, nor would you know that there was one in there or not, unless you actually bothered to read the instructions. So what the EV adapter does is allow you to test through the charger itself. Now, if it's got a built-in RCD, then surely you wanna test that. And how are you gonna do that without one of these? With this, you can take your, your multifunction tester, with a plug, plug it in here, plug that into the charger, and then run through your RCD sequence. If the guy whoever installed that had done this, they'd realize that it doesn't have an RCD built into it. And then he might have thought to himself, ah, oh, maybe it needs one. So that test clearly wasn't carried out. If you're not sure whether it's got a built-in RCD or not, and you're installing EV chargers, regardless, make sure you've got this kit. Otherwise, how can you safely tell your client that the RCD is operating if it's built in or it's not? Let me know in the comments, subscribe to my channel. When I wear my colored glasses, the sun comes shining through. When my rose colored glasses, the world looks shining.